Greg McCallum is the man in charge. He's the number one referee going into the start of 1994. I wonder will he be blowing the whistle on that last Sunday in September in the top grade. A great year of rugby league is underway then. How many times do you see a team under siege like St George has been and suddenly they put the ball down the other end of the park. Is it unfolding here? Goulet looks for his wingman, finds his centre man. Walford goes 10 metres from the line. Walford's 11 out. East holding on in defence. Fed by Coyne through Collins and put down by Mackay. Penalty St George. He's right them, in front. Got them for offside, but uh, a wasted chance there for St George. The pass from Collins was too hard to Mackay and he couldn't control it, but he really carved them up there. St George Goulet's made two breaks now. Look at this pass. He's looking to cut out Mackay and give it to Barnhill. Yeah, what about the pass that set it up from Jason Stevens? This is a bottler. This pass here, great ball. You know, Steve Rach has got an enormous rap on, on this front row because he can go to the line and, and put the ball to a man running into a gap. Good support play, great cover from Shane Werrett. 12 metres out right in front. You'd like to get a shade of black, but you're not going to. Two points, nil. Two nil in favour of the Saints after ten. Ten metres out from the line. Silver away through Smith and then Sidon Camp and Gaffey. Ten out and ten in from touch. Smith, his kicking game is the focal point and the bomb is a beauty. It came off the St George head. That's a try. Rod Silver. Rod Silver gets a try off a header. And the secret to this try was... The height of the kick gave the Eastern Suburbs attacking line plenty of time to get through there and the numbers they had. Now, are they all on site? Yes, they are. And just look at how many Eastern Suburbs players go through. There's three, four, and St. George Mabon, he was hundreds. They went for it. It actually came off. Jason Lowry has tapped that football back in silver. Christmas time for him. Well, I don't know. Is it off the head here or...? Well, it, yeah, you're right, Fatty. Larry's done a sensational job there. And Silver, it could have been three or four East players who scored the try. Tremendous kick. Mayborn, not a tall fullback, so he was behind the eight ball straight away. The St George defence had been outstanding. But when a kick like that goes up, it is a lottery. And the chasing game from Eastern Suburbs was very, very good. Brian Smith then for 200 points in first grade. Seems incredible, doesn't it? A short time he's been in rugby league. And there it is. 200 first grade points for Brian Smith. More importantly, East lead by 6-2 to two after 14. 22 out now. There's the 20 metre line. Salvatore again. The same play. This time. This time. It's a try for Werrett. Sensational stuff there. We talked about the kicking game of Brian Smith, but Craig Salvatore for a big man has a very astute kicking game. And on this occasion, again, the line for St George comes up. So much speed for Werrett. Donnelly has to turn and chase. He's a big man. Werrett flying. Beautiful skills there. Fingertip control. Perfectly executed. Yeah, two great skills there. First of all, Salvatore, point of the toe along with the grabber, and that's a great pickup by Werrick. And he's grabbed a first grade spot, and he's handling it with great professionalism. Brian Smith's attempt at conversion just offline. Ten points to two, five gone, and this is the last. Goldthorpe goes back across the ground with the high bomb. Hardy's coming through, came off his hands, hits the uprights and George, but it's... Called back by McCallum, it came off Harding, went forward. Bradley says, what happened? There's a turnover here, Silver flying high, ball gone forward off Hardy. What about the collision here? This is well, there's the pad on there. Triddle now, 48 metres out from his, uh, from his opponent's line. 
away from Blake and across the back for Mark Coyne. He puts on a sprint, but he is running crabwise. He links up though with Gordon Tellis. Tellis strides out down to the 20 metre line, runs away from uh, the support. Good defence by Silva. And then a penalty goes to the Saints. And Silva's got 10 on the bend. He was never on side. Professional foul. He's off. Gordon Tallis once again made a bustling, bumping run. He made 40 metres. Great run here from Tallis. Good work also from Jeff Orford in defence to tell the man on the outside or the inside who he was to get. You'll see him point. Silva comes across. Tallis taking in a good tackle. Oh, he, was, he tried to get back on side. Silva never quite did it as Wayne Collins continues play on. Under four minutes to go. Three and a half first half. Blake, 10 metres out, to the right of the ground, Mark Coyne throws the dummy, very close to the line, Wilford, put in a touch, oh great defence, the Roosters fans go up. 30 metre line, left behind them as Coyne promotes for Tallis to reach the 20. Collins brings it back to the right for Goldthorpe. He holds it back for Goulet. Goulet, he'll score. Goulet puts it down. St. George's first try. Ten points to six. And the pressure finally telling on the East defence. It's finally cracked. And Scott Goulet, who's been lurking out wide all night, strides through. He had plenty of work to do. It's a lovely ball here by Goldthorpe. Draws one. There's the gap. Hudson uh, stayed on his outside man, a missed tackle by Gaffey. And once Goulet got through, had a short run to the line. Yes, they didn't have a bad line there, Eastern Suburbs, but the size and the strength of, of Scott Goulet, plus the well-weighted pass from Noel Goldthorpe, opened things up. Hudson staying on the outside, as Paul pointed out. And once Goulet was through, he didn't have far to run. Siren will sound. Immediately he's taken this kick. 22 out, 8 metres in from touch and just offline. So at half time, two tries to one, Eastern Suburbs leading St George, 10 points to six. Just get the feeling Phil Blake might be trying a little bit too hard out there. It's an opportunity, as Paul pointed out early, with Tony Smith. It looks like an imminent retirement for him. Blake has come up with some pretty ordinary mistakes as Gaffey nearly goes straight up the middle of the ruck inside the 20. An incident happened in the back oh. play involving Tony Priddle and... Bruce Sinclair through the best right cross you've ever seen in your life as Ricketson goes for the line. Gets the pass away. Marshall's there to support. The little number nine is put down now. Seven metres out from St George's line. And this is the last. Smith comes from the left to the right. Puts the kick in. It's too heavy. He's, he's over to the dead just... ball line. Now they'll go back to Priddle. How's it going? Plenty of claret about. I saw it out the corner of my eye. Yes. It was an incident. I, I don't know how the uh, it was instigated, the incident, but I'll tell you, Bruce Sinclair did not miss Priddle. Here it is here in the play of the ball. Bit of jump. Oh, there's one thrown by Priddle, but he missed and Sinclair didn't. Here's Priddle. He tries to chop Sinclair away. Goes with the left with the left, comes back with the right and didn't travel very far. I just wonder what the report is going to be here. It looks as though that he's going to go against Priddle. If McCallum has asked Priddle to come and join the quorum that they've got going at the moment. Coin the new captain of St George this year. Salvo sees a, a funny side to it. <laughs> I think that Salvo might have just told the St George players exactly what Steve Roach has said to us. If you can't throw them, don't put them up. Well, just having a look at Priddle, I don't particularly fancy tangling with Sinclair. Eh? Hey? No. Leave me right out of him. Important kick this one now. 
an easy one for Smith to take them to a six-point lead. Be a converted try in front. Shouldn't have too many problems. Flags are up. 12-6 the score. Eastern Suburbs leading after 45 minutes. Still the intensity in defence for Eastern Suburbs is of a high level. Goldthorpe decides if you can't go through, go over. Where it's lost sight of it. Now he's put it down. There's a chance. Heron's tackle. Nine metres out. Eastern Suburbs will hold him down. They let him up to play the ball now. Here's Tellus. Tellus is three metres away from the line. Brown again scampers into dummy half. Holds the pass up a fraction. And Jeff Hardy. Hardy gets over the line to score. And... Uh, that brings up 100 points in first grade well, for Jeff Hardy. Some tip for tat there from St George. The kick angled towards Shane Werrett, and he made a complete meal of this one. Really had a pretty fair catch at it, even though you can see he was backing backwards. It wasn't a difficult catch. Bradley put the pressure on. The ball came out to Ian Heron. He couldn't keep the ball going himself. Eventually, Nathan Brown throws the good pass to Jeff Hardy, who goes straight through Luke Rickardson. We're backing backwards. Backing backwards. Where else do you back? <laughs> oh, but this is too many numbers out wide for St George, and Jeff Hardy too much pace and power for Rickardson. A match that the Dragons won. I don't know whether they would have without this fellow. 22 out, coming around, coming around, and straight through. Now, we're even Stevens, are we? 12-10, 12 all after 52. He's come down with absolutely nothing. And there he is getting out from dummy half. Ooh. Rickardson wrapped around the head. Did not miss Heron, who is still on the ground. Well, and he's off. He sent him off. He's gone. Rickardson has been sent. Well, has this been a hasty decision or... Well, McCallum's obviously seen something pretty serious in this tackle. It was a big swinging left arm by Rickardson. You normally don't get sent off for these. And Heron makes the run. Rickardson comes in now. Swinging arm, but oh, send off of all offence, I don't know. Well, I think on what we saw last year, Paul, yes, it is. The arm was stiff and hit him flush across the centre of the face. St George player got injured in that. I think it's Coyne. Salvatore! Wear it! Oh, wear it! He got outside Heron! And where it scores his second try of the night. Ah, oh, Salvatore. Oh, what a magic pass by the former Australian test front rower, Craig Salvatore. He saw Heron out of the corner of the eye, coming in in defence. He didn't have to, Heron. He was one-on-one on, one on where it, and he came in. And Craig Salvatore, so look at him, he's looking. That's a beautiful pass. And where it finished it off well. Yeah, let's just have a look at how you can beat a man with the pass, especially with this speed. Blind side, there's not much on here. Let's just have a look at what Ian Heron does. Salvatore goes to the line. As he frees it there, you can see Heron is starting to come in that way. Where it outside, the quickest man on the field. The pass has been thrown already as play continues. And Heron flat-footed. All he had to do was stay on his man and there was nothing on. One player down, remember. Rickardson sent off. 23 minutes to go on the game when he was sent. Now, 18 and a half to go, and Brian Smith gets the goal. 18 12, and the red, white, and blue. They go up again. 62 gone, they're in front by six. Avoid uh, Shane Werrett. Now, Saints, they'll be keen to spread the ball and every opportunity to play Eastern Suburbs in the centre of the park would be uh, fairly hard to understand given that they've got 13 on 12. What's the story on Brad Mackay, Blocker? Yeah, nothing wrong with Brad Mackay. He's just been replaced for a rest. And uh, interesting to see Eastern Suburbs want to attack by putting Tani Iro on. He can put on a try. St George. Now, they've called a halt. Time out. There's concern in the back play for Wayne Singh, who's been treated by Ronnie Palmer, the East trainer there. The touch judge has come in, so he's seen an infringement, obviously. Imagine on Wayne Singh. There he is. Well, he's kicking out in the tackle. 
might say will be the report will be a penalty to Eastern Suburbs against David Barnhill. Greg McCallum's had a very busy start to the season. This has been a fairly spiteful game on and off. We've had one player sent off. We had uh, Tony Priddle assisted off after a confrontation with Bruce Sinclair. And uh, the penalty goes to Eastern Suburbs and Big Sally puts up the right arm right here. A chance to practically seal the game, and it's why. Well, St George could have caught that football. That's unbelievable lack of communication. But the big men are set wide, and that's where Goldthorpe will look. They've got to start to spread the ball. Goldthorpe goes up the middle again. Now Brown uses the ball for Blake. Blake tries to go himself. It may come off. It has. Or did he ground it? Christian yeah. Mark. He's grounded it all right. Try for Phil Blake. A Phil Blake special. He's turned the clock back 10 years for that one. Saw there was no one home. And so George in a minute will be evens with the Eastern Suburb side. Look at the East defence. They've really struggled with the 12 men. They've done a great job. Blakey looked up. Rod Silver actually was the marker there. And as soon as he kicked it, he was home and hosed. Well, you've got to blame some of the Eastern Suburbs players who should have realised that Silver was there at marker, as Paul points out. The halfback, the lock, somebody had to get back into the second line. Phil Blake, a master at that play. No doubt that he grounded the ball fairly, and he grounded it in the best position possible. We're going to have a tied ball game here with nine and a half minutes to go. Goldthorpe, he'll be looking for a drop goal. Brian Smith... Has already taken the one shot. Heron has only just got it off the tarmac. But we're level at 18 all. It wouldn't want to be much further out. Now it became it becomes a game of getting it down into field goal territory. Tell us they, they won't need a field goal. Goldthorpe scores. Tell us. He's been threatening to do the damage, and now he has. Oh, Gordon Tallis, let me tell you, he's one of the most exciting prospects I've seen for a long time, this hard-running second rail from St George. He's carved them up here. They put a nice ball on for him on the inside. He's a happy man too. Why wouldn't he be? Nathan Brown it is. Look at this pass. Lovely. The markers didn't work. Brian Smith didn't work there in defence from the mark area. Beats another one. Draws and passes. Think about Gordon Tallis when he gets the football, he wants to run, he wants to break the line. And Goldthorpe did well to finish off the movement. Yeah, he was slow to react there was Brian Smith. He was the second marker. He didn't think there was any danger. Look, he's, he's tired there. And Gordon Tallis, what a stride he's got. Accelerates so quickly. The perfect setup there for Noel Gold. Smith, ankle tapped by Nigel Gaffey. He came up with a valiant chase. Heron from right in front, 12 out. Now the Dragons, now the Red and Whites, 24-18. But mightn't be out of the manual because now it's desperation time. This is the time to squeeze the pass. Well, either squeeze the pass, that's Gaffey. Gaffey's, Gaffey's made the break, gets it to the halfway line. Rod Silver backs up and Silver's tackle. I'd be kicking for Werrett again. Gaffey. Cut out pass. Oh, beautiful ball. Taken in by Keo. Where it's down the right flank. Can he score? Where it puts it down in desperation. Oh, big chance for the Roosters there to draw level. And where it's inexperienced has cost them. That really put Silver out of play. Stevens was the tackler. Marshall to the blind side. Where it says kick it. And the ball comes loose and St George have got it. So that is the ball game. The siren in the background. And St George. They win the first Winfield Cup game of 1994. 24-18. There were plenty of anxious moments for them. Their supporters have gone straight to the bar. And can you blame them? They've played catch-ups practically all night. The turning point came with the send-off of Luke Rickardson.